Thanks for tuning in and uh, checking out this Global Travel Stories channel. Uh, this is a little bit of a documentation of our first part of the coronavirus lockdown uh, during April 2020. Uh, if you like what you see here, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, you can hit the uh, little bell button down the bottom as well. Uh, if you want to get notifications before when more videos come along, there will be a second and potentially a third part to this video, depending on how long this whole lockdown situation goes for. But it's also good as well to see how things are evolving here in New Zealand and changing. Uh, we're doing quite well at the moment. This is uh, towards the end of May right now um, at handling the coronavirus. But um, yeah, if you like what you see, definitely uh, leave some comments below and um, I'll give you a little bit of the introduction before each video, explaining what's going on in each video, just so you know what's coming up. You can skip through each video as well if you like, if there's certain parts that you do want to see or re-watch. If you have a look down in the comments, I'm going to put the times for each video there. You can just click on those and it will skip directly to that video so you don't have to sort of sit around and wait, if you're watching on YouTube, of course. Um, yeah, so thanks for uh, tuning in and uh, check out these videos. So just while I was recording, this beautiful rainbow popped up in the background here and sort of distracted us for a second, so I thought I'd come out and show it off a little bit. This is our view, by the way. Not a bad place to stay in lockdown for a while. <laughs> On the 20th of March, the New Zealand government had announced that they were closing their borders. Miranda and I were on vacation at the time in Australia and uh, had to get on our flight and fly back here. It was kind of a bizarre flight. When we arrived onto the plane, there were only eight other passengers on the whole entire flight. And coming back into New Zealand, it was spectacular. The outside was really, really beautiful. We had uh, fantastic weather flying in. So I did capture some of those shots of how amazing it is actually to fly into Queenstown, one of the most beautiful flight journeys you can possibly imagine. Uh, upon arrival in New Zealand, Miranda and I were under self-isolation, which is currently still the law here in New Zealand, um, a month and a half later, two months later, I should say. And um, the self-isolation is essentially two weeks of being in lockdown, so isolated in our own house. Um, if we go outside for some fresh air, for example, uh, we have to keep a minimum distance of two meters or six feet away from any other uh, strangers. So it was quite difficult, but uh, five days after we arrived, uh, New Zealand on the 25th of March had announced at 11.59 p.m. that the whole country would be going into lockdown just as we were. So essentially, alert level four lockdown, which it was called, was um, a period where people had to stay inside of their houses like we were, and were only permitted to leave to either A, go for a small walk in the area to get some fresh air, that's for obviously mental health reasons, or B, to do a little bit of shopping, grocery shopping. But you, if you were caught driving your car elsewhere, you could get in quite a bit of trouble. Now, walking in our area uh, actually allowed us to view a lot of different areas. Um, we have a really, really outstanding region that we live in, Queenstown, as you can see outside here. Nice, beautiful rainbow out there at the moment. Um, and we got an opportunity to see some of the things in the area that we possibly wouldn't see otherwise. Um, we are big fans of sort of going out and doing big adventures and big hikes and um, exploring our area is something that we sort of always put on the we will do later list. So we did get an opportunity to go out and explore some places. Within 45 minute walk of where we live, we have the Skyline Gondola, which is one of the biggest tourist attractions in Queenstown. Um, walking up there was kind of like walking into an abandoned theme park. There was nobody around. The gondolas themselves and the chairlifts were completely standstill. Uh, the Luge, which is like a giant downhill go-kart track, it was completely empty. So uh, the first video will be a little bit of um, that walk and some shots of that area and some magnificent views of Queenstown as well. Uh, the second video that we have playing as well is uh, just some random bits and pieces and clips that I've taken during my time here in uh, level four lockdown. Uh, we were also permitted to go for some small bike rides. So there are some shots of me riding through the main town of Queenstown, which is only five minute bike ride from here. Um, seeing this tourist mecca, this tourist hub completely closed down with nobody around is quite bizarre. It's kind of post-apocalyptic almost. Um, but also really beautiful because uh, we arrived at the beginning of autumn and autumn, I would argue, is the most beautiful time in Queenstown. So the first couple of quick clips uh, you'll get to see right now will show off some of that. Melford. 
Milford Sound right here. It's Milford Sound Airport airstrip right there. And that is the Milford track going up there. Not a bad place to self-isolate. I'm gonna go out and get some ice. It's a fresh snow kind of day. Look at that. Winter's coming, Chicky. Isolation, Chicky's isolating. The worst places to self-isolate, Chicky. No right. Miranda and I have been on lockdown for about a week and a half now, and uh, as of the 26th of March, New Zealand has been on lockdown. So we are going to head up to the skyline in Queenstown. I'm going to walk up there and see what it looks like once it's been closed. Work. You no go work. Place. You go and work. It's closed. you'll ever hear this place. Three days after New Zealand went into lockdown and uh, absolutely dead silent. This is kind of like one of those YouTube channels, you know, where they go through the abandoned theme parks and you can look down into Queenstown right now, it's absolutely still. Kind of makes you take for granted things like touching a pole or sitting down on a bench, you know. Out peak up there and Gorge Road. Not a car on it. I have a walk up the Luge track. I think you can do this any other time, so may as well take advantage of it.
to ourselves, honey. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It's the Arawata Terrace Track. 45 minutes. You down for that? I'm down for that. That cabbage tree. Really big. So we have over there Walter Peak, Cecil Peak, the Remarkables. Peninsula Hill, Queenstown, Fern Hill, Rand Dogs. So that song that you heard in that uh, last little clip was actually something I recorded uh, during my time in lockdown. Uh, it's given me a good opportunity to sort of express some different creative ideas that I have. 
Uh, that song was called The Sun Will Rise, so it did take me a couple of weeks and I had to put that little thing together, which is kind of cool. Uh, now, the next video is another little walk in our area around uh, where we live up here in uh, Fern Hill, Queenstown. Uh, it's known as the Sunshine Bay Track, which is a nice little um, walk along the edge of Lake Wakatipu here. We also did a little walk as well at the end of that up to the One Mile Powerhouse, which is an old powerhouse that goes back to the early 1900s, and then through the Fernhill Forest back home. The second video, uh, the second part of the video, I should say, is a little cycling trip. As I mentioned before, we were allowed during to level four lockdown to go for a bit of a bike ride. Um, so myself and Francesco, keeping that minimum two meter distance, uh, went for a nice ride down to the Seven Mile Reserve, which is located in a place called Closeburn. And in that location as well, we were searching for a Lord of the Rings filming location. Um, it's known as the hilltop of Armand Hen. So if you have seen Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring, you might remember when Frodo falls off the temple and uh, he then sees Aragorn for the last time at the very end of the film before they're attacked by the Urukai. So if you've seen that uh, film, keep an eye out for that. We do go spotting it. We kind of find where that location was, kind of, anyway. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of uh, our area. Beautiful day with the snow up on the mountains. Chicky's favorite time. We're going for walkies, Chicky. We're going, going for, for walkies. walkies. So we just found a little birdie. Got stuck in here. He got stuck in here. You see his little feather? Oh, I don't want to spook him because I don't want him to fall down in into this water. <laughs> Not a bad day for the Sunshine Bay Trek. This is my powerhouse right here. You ready to do it? I'm a mitochondria. You're a mitochondria. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> this is us. Power in the middle house. of the apocalypse. Ready to go into the forest, Chicky? Yeah. You go into the woods today. Cute little fantail. Alright, so we are right here at the moment. We are going all the way up this track to the one mile area and then we make our way back down home. Some of those autumn colours there, Chicky. Yeah. How's that, Chicky? Good? Yeah. <laughs> How's your little girl's bike? <laughs> There's a place called Little Thailand around here. Okay, so this is where we're heading. Francesco's got his brand new mountain bike right here. <laughs> this is Seven Mile Reserve. So heading down to Close Burn Peninsula. Going to see, hopefully, the site of Arm and Hen from Lord of the Rings.
Where are we? Ah, Eagle Nest. About 400 meters. <laughs> and now we're gonna continue. Take a possibly wrong way, wrong direction, the bliss <laughs> one for a little bit, and then. To Stone Rock. Get to Stone Rock, which hopefully is where we're gonna find Amon Hand. Yeah. So we're up at uh, Storm's Rock in Closeburn and we're actually trying to figure out where the filming location of Arm and Hen was. Now, it could either be up here, okay, or somewhere around here. But uh, this is the scene in Fellowship of the Ring, Lord of the Rings, where Frodo falls off a temple and uh, they are attacked by the Urukai. Conclusion? I don't think it's the right one. It's the right view, but it's probably maybe something higher. Than up there. I think it's up there. Apparently that's where Peter Jackson has his holiday home. Can't just break in. We at the hub. There's a tool shed just there. Gotta capture this moment. So after a few weeks of lockdown, uh, getting towards the end of April, uh, we had what was known as Anzac Day. And uh, Anzac Day is a public holiday in New Zealand and my home country of Australia. And it co commemorates the Australian New Zealand Army Corps. Um, it essentially goes back to World War One, where the soldiers from Australia and New Zealand always got lumped together. And um, it's definitely strengthened the bond between the two neighboring countries ever since then. Uh, Anzac Day, uh, part of the tradition is that you have what is known as Anzac biscuits or Anzac bickies as we call biscuits. Um, they're kind of like a cookie and essentially uh, they're made of oats and uh, syrup known as golden syrup which would preserve the cookies um, that the wives of the soldiers would send overseas and hopefully they'd stay um, intact by the time soldiers got those. So start off with a little bit of cooking experimentation. We've got our Anzac cookies and also an attempt at a vegetable pie. Um, and then after almost six weeks of us being in lockdown, five weeks of New Zealand being in lockdown, uh, our alert levels have dropped down. New Zealand was very, very efficient at flattening the curve of um, the coronavirus transmission. So um, by the end of April, we'd gone down into alert level three. And with alert level three, it allowed us to go a little bit further, explore a little bit more of our general region. Uh, we're allowed to hop into the car and drive, you know, say about 45 minutes from home. Um, one of our first stops, we went to a beautiful place called Arrowtown, which is a mining town, a historical mining town here near Queenstown. And Arrowtown is very famous in the autumn for the autumn colors. In fact, it is considered one of the top 10 places in the world to explore the autumn colors. It and uh, Miranda right now is going to give you a little bit of information about that hike that we did. So we're actually really glad that we got to visit Arrowtown during its peak autumn season. So the leaves were really beautiful, all different sorts of colors and vibrant. Um, we got to do the new Chum Gully Walk, which is really beautiful. We got to take in all the views from around Arrowtown um, and even saw out to Queenstown from up there. And Arrowtown is actually the best place in the region to go view the autumn colors. So we're really happy that we got to do that. Okay, our first attempt at making Anzac Bickies. On Anzac Day, of course. 
Look at those skills. A bit uh, odier than expected, but no, they look alright. They'll do. They look good. We're gonna make a Frankenstein's monster. I'll show you. This is Miranda and I's attempt at making a vegetable pie. What are you doing? I'm gonna bake the dough, because why not? I just use this to cut. Okay. So after almost six weeks of being in isolation, Miranda and I finally had the opportunity to get out and explore this beautiful area. So we're finally out of lockdown alert level four, which means that down in three, we can go for a small drive in our region. Also, some medium-sized hikes. So I'm gonna do a hike called the New Chums Gully right now, and we're in beautiful Arrowtown, the best place to be during the autumn with all these beautiful autumn colors. remember Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring, you might remember the prologue at the beginning spoken by Kate Blanchett who plays Lady Galadriel. Um, basically it talks about the War of the Ring at the end of the Last Age, which is the Second Age, and uh, Sildor, King of Men, cuts the ring from Sauron's finger, keeps it by, for himself, he's corrupted by the greed of the ring. And the very next sequence you see is a Sildor and his men coming down through this creepy dark forest. Now What do you think, Chicky? Beautiful. Okay, so we started here. We make our way down there. What does it say about all of them down there? It says, uh, one hour going up, 45 now.
So that is where we finish, right down there. About an hour to go. So right up here, we have what are known as hoodoos. And they're basically formed through wind erosion when the rock sort of erodes away and leaves these sort of pylons. Pretty cool. Ein Wasserfaller. We are back where we started. So the last hike that I did for the month of autumn is a spectacular hike. It is something that I wanted to do for a long time. Uh, essentially starting at Coronet Peak, which is one of the two ski resorts we have here in Queenstown, and making our way down to Arrowtown, as you just saw before, which is spectacular this time of year. So we did get to take in some of those beautiful autumn colours from a different side of Arrowtown as well. Now, uh, the first part of that video uh, that you'll see coming up in a moment uh, is another one of my songs. Uh, this one is called By The Heat. So this is a second song that I wrote, not quite as upbeat, but a little bit more epic. And uh, um, hopefully you really like it. And um, the hike itself was fantastic. We had such beautiful weather for that day. The views were absolutely spe uh, spectacular. And um, check it out, really good video. So we are at the top of Coronet Peak, which is one of Queenstown's two ski resorts. And uh, we'll be making our way down to Arrowtown. And uh, it's about a five hour journey to get down there. We'll make our way over the ridge line. When we get down there, we'll explore some of the spectacular, beautiful water colors. So we've run into a little bit of a problem. Uh, it looks like the trail actually is right up there instead of where we were right down here. There's a good start. So we finally made the trail. It's quite steep. Still out of breath, of course. And now we head up. off up here and uh, knock a couple of golf balls down into the valley below. Heard of that. <laughs> knock out a few windshields. Time we cycled down along here to this along that ridge and down through that little valley down there known as Bush Creek. And that's where I broke my bike. 
So just a little bit of orientation behind me here. We have Arthur's Point over here and just behind that hill is the town of Queenstown. Lake Wakatipu right in the background here in Queenstown Hill. We have Deer Park Heights or Peninsula Hill over here. The Remarkables up there which is our other ski resort. And down here we have Lake Hayes. And our final destination for the day is just over there and that is Arrowtown. And your voice is all I know. Maybe it's Brow Peak over there, that's where we'll be heading. cliff we were just on, right up there. of native land mammals. So when the British first came around here um, in the 1800s, they actually brought with them a lot of mammals, which became very, very destructive to the ecosystem, uh, eating the eggs of the native birds and the small chicks of the native birds. So in order to keep this ecosystem intact, uh, the Department of Conservation, which is the National Parks Department, has in fact actually created a whole lot of traps throughout the trails and national parks in New Zealand uh, to capture some of these pests. This pest is called a stoat, and the stoat was introduced originally to uh, actually catch the rabbits that the British also introduced, and uh, that was a huge mistake because they had um, caused more destruction to the native ecosystem than any other creature um, that have been introduced to this country. So I'm going to show you a stoat right now inside one of these traps. This is essentially, it's like a small weasel, and this is essentially like a mouse trap. Francesca, that's our goal up there. Brown Peak. So we're kind of guessing the trail now. Frankie thinks he's got it. This is for those who are afraid of heights. going is down here to Arrowtown. We have Big Hill and beyond Big Hill is an old mining town from the 1800s known as Mace Town. You go there uh, just over a year ago, a year and a half ago and I took a video on that of myself and Miranda cycling and staying overnight in Mace Town. A little bit of gold panning as well. 
so just some of the trails in the area as well and if you're interested in checking out any of my videos on these trails I have pretty much most of them so down here we have German Hill and uh, this is part of the Saw Pit Gully trail that runs through here uh, last autumn I did that trail there so you can check out that video as well uh, last week we actually did this one up here which is Tobin's track that runs up through uh, the beautiful forest up there great time of the year to be going and then we came down into what's known as Chum Gully down here um, also I've done a cycling trail around here Lake Hayes so you can check that out plenty of hiking and skiing up there in the Remarkables Deer Park Heights Francesco and I did that one last winter and also Queenstown Hill up there you can see a video on that and also my first video from New Zealand where I hiked Ben Lomond that peak right up there as well so now we're making our way down to Arrowtown should be about an hour and a half I'm guessing down there down from here and I was hoping to see Francesco but I don't know where the hell he's gone so Francesco took off and uh, went ahead and he went actually the wrong way so I'm waiting here for him uh, apparently he's coming down from this hill up here somewhere I can finally see him been almost half an hour. There he is in the distance. <laughs> oh, man. So he thought he'd be nice and fast and take off in front of me and obviously he doesn't have the maps I do. And he's lost himself. So we're getting back a little later than we thought. Someone went missing. And now it's time for our descent. beach forest down there. Got the moon watching us. We started here at Coronet Peak. Made our way up to Brow Peak and had a little rest up there. Then we made our way to about here and went down to that spot here and now we're going to Arrowtown. So that is where we just came from, right up there, Brow Peak. Now into the autumn forest we go. birds up here in the sycamore trees. Hey. Oh yeah, no, it's a it's a um bower bird. They're calling out to each other. Just how beautiful the colours are. So we are now in another part of the uh, autumn forest. These trees up here are all European larch trees. Hiking in the This is where we say goodbye to this beautiful autumn forest heading right now back into Arrowtown.
Yeah, this is Bush Creek. Thank you very much for sitting through all of those videos. Not sure if you did sit through all of them or just part of them, but uh, it's definitely appreciated to have people watch and give their feedback as well. Please leave a comment if uh, you do have any suggestions or if you have any questions around things. Um, if there's anything that you'd like me to address in any, any of the videos, you can send an email to globaltravelstories at gmail.com. Um, once again, hit subscribe, like the video, and uh, if you want to get notifications, you can hit the little bell button down there. Thank you very much. New video will be coming in the next couple of weeks.